What's up everyone, Ebar here with Hardware Connects, and let's kick things off with the Nvidia Shield TV because I've been using this device for the past three years ever since launch and it has played a vital role here in the household uh, on a regular basis because I pretty much use it every day to consume content, whether that's catching up on my favorite TV shows on Netflix or uh, catching up on my subscription box with YouTube. Uh, there's just so many things that I could do with the um, Shield TV because it's running Android TV. I can load it up with my favorite apps, whether that's ESPN, of course, the list just keeps going on. It's really interesting because NVIDIA has actually added constant updates to the Shield TV to enhance the user experience, uh, and they've added a lot of things uh, over the course of these three years, and that includes you know, support uh, for an expanded uh, app library, so a lot of apps are sort of hopping onto the Android ecosystem for the TV, uh, and there's also the, addition, the latest edition of Google Assistant and the whole smart home integration, which I'll get to uh, later in the video. And last but not least, uh, we have game stream and games uh, geforce games now which is an awesome a little perk that a lot of shield existing shield tv uh, users can take advantage of and i'll obviously get to that as well the uh, later on in the video so i'm just going to talk about my experience using the shield tv for the past three years and how it has enhanced my content viewing experience in the household and i'll also go over a few issues i've had over the last few years but first a quick message from our sponsor it's time to play with light with Fantex Digital RGB Starter Kit that includes two LED strips and all the appropriate cables. The main hub is magnetic. Velcro tape is available with three digital channels for LED strips or Halo Slugs fan frames that display a ton of lighting effects and they're absolutely gorgeous. Check out the kit down below. All right, so before I talk about my user experience using the Shield TV, I do want to quickly mention that I've been using the first generation Shield TV ever since launch, so the 2015 model. Um, but if you do recall, NVIDIA did refresh the Shield TV uh, last year during CES uh, by basically shrinking down the size, uh, but it still features the same processor. So the 2015 and the 2017 models feature the exact same Tegra X1 chip with three gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of onboard storage. Speaking of storage, 16 gigabytes is not enough for me personally to house all of my apps. It's just too limited for the OS and the content. So Nvidia was kind enough to include a micro SD card slot on the Shield TV, the first generation model. Uh, so all I did was just uh, throw in uh, a SanDisk 64 gigabyte micro SD card that I picked up from Amazon for a really good deal. I just popped it in there. And what's interesting is that you do have the option to either use it as an external drive to browse files or something, or you can expand that storage with the Shield TV so you can have, you can have apps directed to that micro SD card and load, you know, games or, or certain apps that you that are sort of a larger in capacity. I do want to mention that the 2017 model does not come with a micro SD card slot, which is a little bit of a disappointment. But uh, if you're still planning on or if you still uh, want to expand that storage, you can do that externally by plugging in an external hard drive or USB 3.0 flash drives. In this case, I can plug in something like the Toshiba XS700 240 gigabyte external SSD to help speed up load times. Now my Shield TV is connected to an LG NanoCell 4K TV, so it supports that 4K resolution at 60 Hertz without a problem. And the whole experience, it's still faster and that's what really surprises me even after three years of constant usage and after constant updates, uh, the experience hasn't really slowed down. You, I, I could barely notice a lag when it comes to navigating through the UI. And to me, that's just great because uh, NVIDIA is focusing on software and hardware optimizations because they are making the hardware. It's just that they're spending a little bit more time with the software to make it uh, a much more a user enhanced experience. I do want to talk about this cool feature that was included with the Shield TV and that is HTCP 2.2 and CEC support uh, through the HDMI port. So this essentially allows the user to turn off the Shield TV as well as uh, the TV that's connected th to the HDMI port uh, at the same time using the Shield remote controller. So you don't have to mess around with or you don't have to look after uh, the actual TV remote to turn off the TV. So kind of taking two things at the same time. It's just controlled everything through the Shield remote. And I think that's pretty awesome. And if you want to turn on the TV, you can just simply use the Shield remote controller, click tap on one of the buttons, it'll automatically turn on the Shield TV. And obviously you will see the TV turn on as well. It's pretty awesome in my opinion. I think it's those little things that sort of um, just 
really, again, enhances the user experience. Now, the CEC protocol over HDMI can cause issues with Logitech's Harmony ecosystem, which has a turn on off function for all the devices at the same time. That means if you turn off your Shield TV with the Shield controller, and if you turn off uh, other components with the Harmonies all off function, it'll turn back on your TV. And uh, that uh, gets a little bit annoying, especially if you have the Shield TV plugged into a receiver uh, instead of directly to a TV. All right, so with the specs and all the other quirks out of the way, let's talk about the user interface. Now, I'm not really a fan of the recent 7.0 experience update because that was recently launched or was recently rolled out to the Shield TV last week. Uh, and it was just it just breeds a new sort of UI to the home screen and I'm still getting used to it but I'm not exactly a fan of uh, this new layout when compared to previous home screen layouts that we're used to uh, and especially if you're an existing Shield TV owner and if you recently upgraded to the experience 7.0 update uh, you can definitely relate to what I'm talking about. So now you have content organized by rows. So in this case, we have our apps right at the top and we have to add our most frequently used apps manually directly to the home screen uh, so that we have instant access. Or you can click on the app drawer that brings up the list of apps that you have installed on the device. This is an extra step in my opinion because with the previous interface, uh, all of the apps were directed uh, or it was directly on the home screen and it was a lot faster to access them. Now, I might be a little too critical with this UI, but personally, I still do prefer the previous home screen setups. But hey, you may end up liking it and over time, um, I will eventually end up liking it too. Coming back to this home screen setup, as I mentioned earlier, the content is organized in rows. We have the app row the play next row that displays movies, shows, or apps that you have downloaded from the Play Store and you haven't really checked them out, or if you want to resume watching a certain episode or something. Below that, we have different channels with their respective content. They primarily display popular ones, but you can customize a selection if you go all the way at the bottom. Uh, there's the settings tab located at the top right hand side and this is where you have access to all sorts of settings for the shield tv including the ability to put the device to sleep now another cool feature that i'm really excited to talk about is the added support for 4k hdr playback uh, with the shield tv so essentially you know i have it connected to the lg nanocell 4k tv that features an hdr 10 profile so uh, essentially if i have content especially you know with amazon prime that does stream ultra uhd content with hdr uh, it'll the tv will automatically pick that profile up and the content would just look a lot more richer in colors the dynamic range would be fantastic especially when you're watching the shows like grand tour now you have the colors that sort of pop um, and you get to see a lot more in the detail side the shadows and Again, it's just breathtaking and I highly recommend if you do get a chance, definitely check it out. And if you are an existing Shield TV user, uh, this is an excellent option. If, I think if you're looking to upgrade to a 4K TV, I think now's the time to actually take advantage of um, that feature, especially with 4K HDR playback support on the Shield TV, because uh, if you have content, ac access to content, HDR content in particular, uh, this is a great feature in my opinion. Now this next feature is one of my favorite things added to the Shield TV and that is the inclusion of Google Assistant. Uh, so essentially this allows the user to control their smart home connected devices in their household with the help of their voice. So for instance, in this case, you can use the Shield remote TV, uh, remote controller, tap on the, or click on the microphone button and you can start asking questions just like you would on your smartphone when you activate Google Assistant. So I can ask it to turn off or turn on my studio lights, set my thermostat to a certain temperature. If I want to turn on the heater, I can literally do that on my Shield TV. Or if I want to play around with my Nano Leaf Aurora lights, in this case, I have them uh, placed on my living room so I can basically turn them on uh, with, you know, just talking to the Shield TV remote controller and it would just turn them on because Google Assistant is linked to the whole ecosystem and I uh, have them all connected to the same network, to the same account, so they start talking to each other and that is an excellent feature. I think a lot of people, especially if you're an existing Shield TV user, um, and if you're thinking of investing in smart home devices, I think this is an excellent feature in my opinion because you wouldn't have to spend that extra money on picking up a Google Home or Google Home Mini. Google Assistant is right there for accessing. I should also mention that the Shield TV supports Chromecast, so you can easily cast your content from your portable mobile device without a problem, regardless if it's an Android device or an iOS device, you wouldn't have a problem at all. All you have to do is just make sure that you've connected the Shield TV to the same network and you'll just be up and running in no time. In fact, if you want to screen share uh, what's on your Android device, you can easily do that. I was easily able to do that on my BlackBerry smartphone. So overall, great experience. Uh, I think 
thumbs up for that as well. The last thing that I want to discuss is some of the NVIDIA perks included with the Shield TV, like GameStream and GeForce Now. Uh, I think a lot of you guys are familiar with GameStream. If you have an NVIDIA based or if you have a gaming PC featuring an NVIDIA GPU, uh, and if that PC is connected to the same network, uh, you can basically link your GeForce Experience accounts on the TV and the PC and run AAA titles uh, just without uh, having to connect uh, using a long HDMI cable uh, to the TV. It works pretty well. I did try playing Battlefield 1 and a few other titles uh, using GameStream and it works just fine. The whole thing is that I have to get used to this controller. I'm not, I'm not really used to playing games on a controller because I'm so used to mechanical keyboard and a mouse, so that's definitely something that I have to get used to. But uh, it is a really cool feature to take advantage of. Then there's GeForce Now, which is an incredible feature for uh, Shield TV owners who don't exactly have a gaming PC with a GeForce-based graphics card. So this essentially allows you to stream uh, AAA titles uh, to the Shield TV at 1080p resolution, uh, and this doesn't require a graphics card connected to the same network. It just uses the NVIDIA servers, uh, but all you need to do is get a stable uh, internet connection to the Shield TV and you'll just be good to go. What's really interesting is that for now, uh, existing Shield TV owners can use GeForce Now for free because it used to be a paid or it used to be a monthly subscription service, but right now NVIDIA is actually working on uh, an updated version of GeForce Now, so they've basically terminated or suspended the monthly subscription fee uh, for existing uh, GeForce Now users or people who are looking to try out new titles can definitely hop on to GeForce Now and you can start enjoying titles like uh, Tomb Raider or uh, Sniper Elite 2. I'm pretty sure that that will kill productivity time as well, so I'm going to I'm gonna control myself there. Okay, quick update here. Uh, Nvidia actually sent us out an email a few days ago regarding new update that I've been rolling out to the GeForce Now app on the Shield TV that'll be rolling out in the next few weeks. And the main highlight is that users will be able to link their Steam and Uplay accounts on the GeForce Now app. So right now, uh, the, the access to games with GeForce Now is not that great. It's pretty old titles. But with the new update, you'll be able to access the recent titles like uh, Fortnite, PUBG, and a few more, uh, obviously with the help of this new Steam and Uplay support on the GeForce Now app. I think it's a pretty cool feature, especially for users who don't necessarily have a gaming PC with a GTX-based graphics card. And if you're an AMD user, this is something that you can take advantage of. Now, just to refresh your memory, a few key updates that have been rolled out to the Shield TV in the past two years is, of course, the support for external uh, USB devices that can be uh, shared as internal storage, so with the ability to uh, directly house apps within that external solution. I think that's fantastic. And we obviously saw the added support for Plex Media Service. So if you're an existing Plex user, uh, the Shield TV would be an excellent companion to that. And of course, we have the uh, addition of Google Assistant and the way how you can uh, control your smart home devices with the help of your voice using the Shield Remote Controller. And uh, overall, it's a great feature. It works really well for me. I think that's pretty cool. And finally, we have the Android 8.0 uh, Oreo update that, that was been rolled out to the Shield TV just a few weeks ago. And I'm still, you know, I'm still getting used to it. So guys, that has been my experience using the NVIDIA Shield TV for the past three years. Uh, and just to get this out of the way, this video is not sponsored by NVIDIA. I know a lot of you guys would probably start thinking that this whole thing has been sponsored by NVIDIA, but that's not the case here. I just happen to love the device and it just seems to work uh, for the stuff that I really need. Uh, if you're an existing Shield TV owner, let me know in the comments down below what your experience is like. Have you experienced any issues? Uh, not to mention if you have set up the Harmony ecosystem, have you experienced issues with the power on off feature? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Now these things could be fixed with a software or a firmware update, but that's something that we'll have to wait for. And I'll make sure to leave links in the description down below if you're interested in checking out the NVIDIA Shield TV. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.